what is up my people welcome back to my channel if this is your first time here then just welcome to my channel go ahead and hit the subscribe button because you will not be disappointed unless you're just a hater and even still i welcome all engagement because it helps the channel child today's video y'all is a whole hot mess okay it's a mess it made me mad i ain't gonna lie i'm upset so honey let me just take a couple more sips of my good old iced coffee and we just gonna get into it because girl before i get started shout out to kelsey because in the last video the comment she was like i think i'll play uno with you unless somebody's out catfishing and i'm like girl chances are you probably did because i'm addicted to uno and all of my downtime literally every night before i go to bed i'm playing uno on that little app for like hour minimum unless i run out of coins which tends to happen because i like to bet all of my coins shot and try to flip my money but yeah shout out to you girl even though I think you probably hit me with a draw four. I think you might have. I think you might have. If you're not new here, you already know the vibes. Geese in the background. Them girls are <clears throat> child. They out there arguing with each other today. Now, honey, this last name, it's a struggle to pronounce. I'm going to try to get it out at least this one time. And then we're going to leave it alone and we're going to never talk about it again. Christine Pe Paolia, Paolilla, one of the two, probably not either, but whatever. She is born in Long Island, New York, March 31st, 1986, making her an Aries. Shout out to the Aries. It's y'all season. Her mother, Lori, was a stay-at-home mom, and her father, Charles, he worked construction. They also have a son, which they had before her, so she had an older brother, and it was just the two kids. Unfortunately, though, when Christine is just two years old, she loses her father in a construction accident. Now, at the time, Christine is only two, so she's kind of too young to process, like fully process the loss for what it is. But this takes a huge toll on Lori losing her husband. The thing is, not only was he the breadwinner of the family, I mean, she loved her husband, and now she's without him raising two small kids by herself the stress of now being a single mother responsible for two small kids all on her own and losing her husband it just the grief is just too much she begins using and forms a horrible nasty little habit which ultimately results in her losing custody of both christine and her brother her parents however do step in and take care of the kids and so they are left in pretty good hands. The grandparents were really good to them. Lori kept in contact with the kids, which was really tough for Christine as she got older because she really didn't understand like, why were you not at the house anymore? And why can't I join you wherever you are? Like, we should be together. She had a very difficult time like coping with this and understanding this. It was very difficult for Lori as well because it's like a double-edged sword. You don't want to be completely out of your child's life but at the same time, you know, when you talk to them and they want to be with you, they don't understand why they can't. It's, you know, not an easy thing to deal with. By the time Christine reaches kindergarten, she is faced with yet another obstacle or issue. She begins noticing when she wakes up in the morning that an excessive amount of her hair is being left behind on the pillow. And it's shedding and coming out like excessively more than the few little average strands that we typically lose a day. Of course, our grandparents also notice, and when it progressively gets worse, no matter what they try to do to prevent it, they decide to go ahead and take her to the doctor and see, you know, what's going on. The doctors tell her that what she is actually experiencing is alopecia. It really wasn't much that they could do to prevent the hair loss, and she is losing all of her hair, like eye eyelashes, eyebrows just everything y'all know how kids get down child they can be terrible so of course the children they made fun of her and teased her a lot about this and this this really made her insecure this made her really reserved she will oftentimes just say to herself not even attempt to make friends because nobody was really all that nice to her at all as she got older and it progressively got worse and she lost more and more hair her grandparents would buy her wigs to try to you know make her feel a little better and make it less apparent but the wigs that they bought her really weren't that cute or natural looking so the kids they continue to tease her y'all know what kids give they be horrible sometimes she's still in constant contact with her mother who is still unfortunately battling her addiction. But Lori is really starting to get tired of her little street life and she is just ready to go back home and be 
be a mom, be there for her kids. She really misses them and she's just tired of all of the things that come along with that hard little lifestyle. She finally decides, you know what? This ain't, this ain't it. Like it's not worth it. I'm tired. Lori decides she's going to seek treatment and she was very committed to getting herself better and getting her life back, getting her kids back. So she does get herself to the point where she is able to prove that she is now a fit parent and she is ready. Not only does Lori clean herself up and regain custody of her children, she finds love again and she gets married. Sis finds her a good man, Savannah. After she is reunited with her children and she regains custody, her and her new husband, they move the family to Clear Lake City, Texas, which is a suburb of Houston. Shout out to Houston, Texas. I'll be there in a couple of months. Child, I'm scared. Christine is now entering high school and her alopecia is really bad. Her eyesight was also pretty bad, which resulted in her having to wear these really, really thick glasses, which her mother would refer to as Coke bottles, which says you just got back. Like you can't come back in shading. That's what we not doing. That's what I would have told her, but she ain't me, so whatever. Now, even though Christine is now in a new city, it's the same old mess when it comes to the kids and how she is treated at school, how she's bullied. By this time, because of how bad her alopecia was, she wore wigs all the time. She had no, really no other choice. And unfortunately, the quality still was not there with the wigs. The kids would taunt her about it all the time. They would call her wigs Halloween wigs because they just, they didn't look natural at all. And because they knew it was a wig, a lot of times kids would snatch them off, which of course would reveal that she had alopecia and apparently these kids didn't have no damn heart because how do you keep bullying somebody after that? They don't show her any kind of mercy. They just continue to relentlessly bully this girl. They would also make fun of her very thick glasses, her overall appearance, that she was weird, but it wasn't that she was really weird. She had been bullied her whole life and she was very insecure. She had no friends. She was extremely unhappy. She was very reserved and just trying to really deal and maneuver through high school and life period as best she could given the card she was dealt. And then she befriends a fellow student by the name of Christopher Lee Snyder. Chris was one of the very first and few people who had actually tried to treat the girl like a human being. The two form a friendship and they have a really cool bond. Not long after that though, it progresses into a nice little cute little puppy love. She falls head over heels for Chris. You know how that young love is that you just believe is gonna last forever. But with her, it's like magnified times a thousand because literally everybody else had always treated her like crap. And so she was extremely into Chris. Like Chris was it for her. Unfortunately though, their little puppy love whirlwind romance is abruptly ended when he is arrested for car theft and sent off to juvenile jail because he was a bad boy. This of course devastated her but I mean she just had to move on with her life as best she could. Christine enrolls in Clear Lake High School where she is unexpectedly befriended by two very popular, very pretty girls. The two best friends, Rachel and Tiffany, they had known each other for quite some time and they were very well known and very well liked about the school and so them giving her their stamp of approval kind of helped her out a bit. She didn't understand why of all people these two pretty cool girls would be interested in being her friend. Not only were they nice to her, they took the initiative to help her out with her makeup, show her the colors that complemented her complexion. They helped her out with the wigs. They stopped her from, you know, buying the ones that weren't that cute, helped her get some that were a lot more natural looking, a lot more stylish and cute overall. It was very much a, a clueless Cher and Dion type of thing. You know, when they took on the task of fixing up Brittany Murphy. That's what they gave. And Christine, she was very thankful for the girls, but it was always in the back of her mind, like, why me? Like, why would these two pretty cool girls wanna be friends with me? Well, what's the reason? Like, why? Whatever the reason, it was helping boost her image with the students. She had gained some confidence. It helped her overall appearance. So she just, she just rolled with it. She was like, I don't know why y'all wanna be my friend. But hey, I'm with it. Rachel and Tiffany, they really, really worked to boost her self-esteem and just kind of undo 
a lot of what the bullying over the years had done to her and her self-worth. It really helped to change everything about her that she had been bullied about in the past. So the kids really didn't have anything left to say. And if they did, the two friends were more than happy and willing to stand up for her and defend her. The overall quality of Christine's life had dramatically improved and she was just really happy with the way things were going. They had completely transformed Christine and with each year passing, you know, the older kids who knew her old T, they were graduating and going on and the new kids were coming in. So they only knew this new and improved version of Christine. She received a lot of positive attention, not only from her fellow peers, but also the boys. They began to like Christine too. She was looking all cute. She was popular. She had cute friends. She just appeared to have it going on. Her popularity rose so much that in 2003, her junior year in high school, she was actually voted Miss Irresistible by her fellow classmates. Child, they didn't have that in my school. They seem a little fast. The three definitely became BFF goals. Now, Tiffany and Rachel were one year older than Christine, so they were in their senior year when she was a junior. And when they graduate, they are confident that they have built her up to be everything that she needed to be and survive those high school hallways. So they're very confident in the position that they had left Christine in, and she was confident herself. Like, she didn't have any worries at all she was good and granted she was voted miss irresistible and all of the men's the little young men's the little men's junior they wanted her but um she had her eyes on one person you see chris that same year is paroled immediately after chris's release he sought out to reunite with christine and rekindle their little kitty romance and by this time, Chris had changed quite a bit. He was always seen as like this little tough, bad, bad boy. His style was very much gothic. But by this time, he was 18. Honey, he wore spiked hair. He had piercings. And he was now tougher than ever. But he wasn't always this tough, hardcore kid. There isn't a whole lot of information about his childhood life, but from what his sister told, he had a pretty normal average childhood. And he was a really good kid up until the age of 12. He was playing football in the street and this truck came along and hit him. And she claims that ever since that accident, he literally was never the same. Like the accident just changed him. And he started to get into trouble a whole lot after the fact. So they reunite. She is excited that her man is back out here on the streets. She was telling her friends about her old love and how he is back in her life. And she's so happy. And they're like, they're excited for her. They're happy until they actually meet him. And they're like, girl, him? Of all the boys that you could choose to date, you're Miss Irresistible. This is the guy that you choose? why they do not like him not only because of his appearance but because of his little you know his little criminal record that he had started to work on so they tell her yeah this probably ain't the one sis you probably shouldn't date him but she doesn't listen she dates him anyway because he had a a, a place in her heart okay he was there for her during a rough time and it meant a lot to her. When Lori and her husband find out that Christine is back with Chris and they're spending time together, they're not here for it either. They tell her that she needs to stop seeing him. But of course she doesn't. She doesn't want to hear that because she thinks she is in love, child. Chris was her man, the love of her life, and nobody was going to get in the way of that. Lori tries everything to keep this boy away from her daughter and vice versa. She tried putting Christine on punishment, but both of them worked. So it was a hard task keeping tabs on her 24 seven. She would always find a way to sneak out and go see Chris. Lori even goes to the police because he's older than her daughter, but he's only a year and a half older than her. So that really didn't work. It wasn't any statutory laws that he was breaking by seeing their daughter. They even tried to get a restraining order to keep Chris away from Christine, but their request is not granted, is denied because technically he hadn't broken any laws, he hadn't harmed her. So they would not grant them that restraining order. Lori could not stand Chris. And the thing is, she said that it was something in his eyes that every time she saw him and he looked, looked at her, he just made her uncomfortable. She just felt like something ain't right with sis. 
eventually they just have to give up because no matter what measures they took to try to keep her away from him child they always ended up right back together nothing stuck this look is taking a turn that i wasn't expecting child i was trying to do men but somehow we ended up in the ocean somewhere but whatever we're gonna keep going rachel and tiffany they were very much concerned about how much time she was spending with chris and the fact that he had begun to isolate her from not only them but her family he would not allow her to hang out with them that often. Chris also really instigated the rift that had formed between her and her family. He would manipulate her into thinking that, you know, he was the one that wanted better for her and that really wanted her to be happy and they didn't. It worked. The relationship between the two teens, it quickly becomes a very very toxic one he would oftentimes use her insecurities to manipulate her he would even tease her about alopecia hair loss basically doing the things that the kids who used to taunt her in school would do to her he was also extremely jealous and insecure i guess he thought she had glowed up honey and she was probably gonna leave him which she should have but she actually loved him and wanted to be with him and had no desire to be with anyone else as long as he was willing to entertain her she was willing to stay and put up with all of the things, child. All of them, no matter how bad they were. After high school, Tiffany and Rachel, they had moved into a house together. The house belonged to Tiffany's dad, but he had moved out of town. But he allows the two to stay there in a roommate type, you know, situation. And they coexist peacefully, unlike in my last story. These two got along really well. Tiffany's boyfriend, Marcus, he eventually moves in because he was there all the time. Anyway, Marcus's cousin Adelbert also moves in eventually because he is spending a lot of time at the house. The four of them got along really, really well. Marcus allegedly was a little street pharmacist, so he was out there selling, you know, some things. They would hang out at the house all the time. They were still in regular contact with Christine, not as often as they would have liked or as often as they used to before Chris, but that's because he came in and he didn't want her around her friends, especially because they didn't like him. And so they were like, girl, if he got to come, don't even worry about it. So she hung out with them every now and then, but it wasn't very often. On July 18th, 2003, the group of four, they're planning to have a little gathering at the house. They're gearing up to host a party and have a good time. Christopher and Christine, they arrive at the house on that afternoon, but... They're not there for the party. They arrive with a completely different agenda. By this time, the two of them, they have formed a nasty little drug habit. They know the kind of business that Marcus is into, and so they go over to the house with the intent to take whatever they could from him, be it his supply or his money, whatever they could get. When they arrive to the house, Rachel, she lets them in. Very shortly after, an altercation ensues between the house and Christopher and Christine. So they are going back and forth. Unfortunately, the couple had come with bad intentions and also armed. And so they take out their weapons and proceed to shoot everybody in the house. Christine actually shoots Rachel and Tiffany herself in the crotch area. They take what it is that they can find and the two immediately flee the scene, leaving behind virtually no evidence. They actually weren't even there that long. The whole ordeal lasts less than 15 minutes total. One of the young lady's friends had not been able to reach her and they thought this was kind of odd. So they decided to stop by the house and see what's going on. And so they walk in and see all of this and immediately dial 911. When the police learned that Marcus was a street pharmacist, they immediately assumed that this was just a deal gone wrong and that was the full extent of what had happened here. They speak with the neighbors and they are able to get a description of the assailants that they were wearing all black, that it was a male and a female, and they're able to put together a timeline. But regardless of how descriptive the witnesses were, they weren't able to identify who these two people were and why they would do something like this if it was not in fact a deal gone wrong. With virtually no evidence left behind, they have a very difficult time piecing together anything else other than what they were given. In the Clear Lake City murders, it becomes a very widely known unsolved case. Years go by and police get no closer to finding out who these people were that was responsible for taking out this group of friends than they were on the very first day child before they talked to the neighbors and the witnesses. After this attack happened, the couple, they went off on a horrible binge and their addictions really spiraled. A year later, 
Christine was starting to get tired of living this hard knock life with Chris. Like she was really growing tired. He was still getting into trouble. He was still out here trying to steal cars. And then luckily for her, he actually gets picked up on car theft and arrested and sent off to jail. At this time, she decides to go into rehab and get herself together. She gets back in touch with her family and she's just like, I just want to get myself together at this point. And with Chris locked up, there is no better time than now to make that change. She breaks it off with Chris and she goes and checks into a center for treatment. And while she is there with a clear mind, she cannot escape the guilt that she begins to feel for what she had done to the two girls that had done so much for her and had only been nice to her. I'm mad. Instead of going to the police and confessing to them and giving her family some kind of closure, making it as right as she can at this point she just wants to escape it she just wants to forget that it ever happened and go on about her life but she can't escape it because every year when they're getting close to the anniversary of this incident it's like all over the news and it's all everybody wants to talk about the same thing happens while she is at this facility she cannot escape it it's all over the tv program and child and they get to talking about it. And finally, she decides to open up to somebody, not the police child, just another resident at the facility. And she gives a complete detailed account of what actually happens and admits that she was the one who had done this with her ex-boyfriend. The person that she tells does not go to the police though. They keep her secret. She's able to just go on and continue her treatment. She also meets a man by the name of Justin Wright. Justin is also in recovery, but the two, they have an instant connection. They bond and they hit it off and begin to date. The two very quickly get married. Within the next year, they were husband and wife. And things are really looking up for Christine. Her life is really coming together. She's gotten away from Christopher. She's gone to rehab. She's gotten married. And she also comes into some money. She had a $360,000 trust fund set up to receive once she hit 18 from her father. But child, you know, you can only run so far from your past and your demons because now, once again, the anniversary of this incident is coming up and it's all over the news again. And when she sees it on television, she breaks down and she admits to Justin that she was the one that had done this. She gets really paranoid. She feels like it's only a matter of time before they catch up to her. Like this is really going to end badly for her and it's just inevitable. Her impending doom is just too much. Now, Justin, he he chooses to stick by his wife's side. Honey. He loves him some Christine and he wants to protect her at all costs, no matter how horrible of a person she is and what she had done in her past. Justin suggests that they, they leave town. They go into hiding. Pretend like this never happened and get out of town. And the quicker they get out of there, the better. They get them a little motel room with her $360,000. Unfortunately, they both relapse and begin using again. And they have all of this money. And so not only are they living off of her trust fund money, but they are using it to support their habit. Christine was so shaken that she would not even leave the hotel room. Months go by. She doesn't leave for anything. Only her husband, Justin, would leave and go get food and go re-up on their little supply. That literally was the only reason he left, and she never did. She was so afraid that she would be captured. Meanwhile, while she was living it up with her brand new husband, Justin, Chris had moved in with the woman that he had met off of the internet. And so when he got home from jail, that's where he went. I told y'all they got sites for that. I told y'all. Or they could have met on Facebook. I don't know. Now, on July 8th, 2006, police received an anonymous phone call from a person naming Christopher and Christine as the two people responsible for this incident. The mail caller tells police that he had been in a rehab facility with Christine and that she had admitted to him everything that she had done. And so he's sure that sis is the one behind it. They need to find her. It takes them all of 11 days to locate Miss Christine and her husband hiding out in their motel. They take them both down to the station and separate and interrogate them. Christine is acting like she don't know what's going on. She ain't got nothing to do with nothing. Meanwhile, in her husband's interrogation room, he's telling it all. 
he is telling them that sis, yes, she told him because she told me to. And this is what she said she did. When the friends realized what they had come for, things get heated. And without hesitation, Riz, he pulls out his gun and he starts shooting. And when she sees him do that, she doesn't hesitate to pull out hers and follow suit. She had also told him about how Rachel had survived and was crawling to the phone. And before she could reach the phone to dial 911, she herself finished her off with her own her own hands. Sick. Now he doesn't recall the exact date that she had confessed to him, but he also tells them about how after it began circulating on the news again, the two had decided to go into hiding to avoid her being captured and that they had pretty much been tucked away in that hotel room for the past eight months. They had her trust fund money so they were able to pay for the room and get food and also supplied their habit spending $500 a day on average. Now he claims that when she initially admitted to this, he didn't even believe her. He was like, no, you lying. But then when it became apparent that she was really telling the truth, he became overwhelmed and it began to give him nightmares. He could barely sleep, but still he chose to stay with her. So, okay. He also says that he just couldn't believe his sweet wife would commit such a heinous act. She just didn't seem like the type that could or would do any of this. And so from there, he puts it in the back of his mind, goes on about life with her, ignoring the fact that she's horrible. After he tells them all of this, they immediately place him under arrest because he is actually on probation. So he wasn't supposed to be up in the hotel room getting high. And when they initially got to the hotel room and picked them up, they had hundreds of empty needles all over the room. And they had 85 field needles ready to be used. So they was like, you know what? Thanks for the details, but you violated. So that's your ass. Come on, put the cuffs on, let's go. So now he is scared because he thinking he about to be hauled off back down to the jail. And then they hit him with the deal. They're like, you know what? On second thought, we will forego all of these charges if you agree to testify against her in court. Because you know, with them being married, they couldn't force him to testify against his wife. He didn't hesitate to take the deal. He said, sign me up, baby, put my name down on the dotted line. I will gladly repeat all of this in a court of law and point her out. It wasn't, I need a minute. He didn't have a second thought. He was just like, okay. After news began to circulate that Christine had been picked up for the crimes, Christopher's family, they reach out to him and they're like, you know what? Your girl just got arrested for this. I don't know if they were trying to give him the heads up, or trying to convince him to turn himself in. Whatever the case, they make him aware that sis had been picked up. And there was also a warrant out for his arrest as well. They immediately locate him, find where he is supposed to be, and go out there to try to pick him up. When they get there, they find that he is not actually in the house at all. But it doesn't take them long to locate him. Not in the way that they would have liked though. Because when he got the news that there was a warrant out for his arrest. Instead of waiting on them to come out and apprehend him. And him having to actually pay for the things that he had done to these, these people. He goes into the woods behind his house and takes his own life. And so when they find him back there, it's too late. Christine is charged with four counts of capital murder. And she goes from denying that she was there and had any involvement to admitting that she was in fact there. But Chris was the one that was the mastermind behind the whole thing. That he had two weapons and he took one and forced her to take the other one. And the one that she had actually fired, she didn't even fire on her own. He had actually, y'all are so dramatic, like girl who was going to believe this. She had it in her hands and he put his hands around hers and he actually forced her little finger to apply pressure to the trigger child. Girl, who was going to believe that? She also denied admitting that she had done that to Rachel and said that that was actually Chris who did that, not me. And according to little Miss Christine, she was also so afraid of Chris that she went along with it and was too afraid to tell anybody after the fact. When they left, she actually had to be at work at Walgreens in 30 minutes. And so he dropped her off, she worked her shift. She was too afraid to call the police or tell anybody any of the things. And so she just goes about her life in fear with him sis goes to court with these lies child look at look at her now i know i look crazy right now because i'm not done blending but look at this sis looks like angelica's little doll cynthia came to life 
okay, and just chose violence. Look at her, a mess. Just not cute at all. All of that work that Rachel and Tiffany had done, gone down the drain. Ultimately though, she decides to just go ahead and plead guilty. She is sentenced to life with the possibility of parole. She will be eligible in 2046 when she is 60 years old. Did I mention she was an Aries? And really, I'm not even trying to throw shade at this point right now because <sighs> Christopher, crusty ass Christopher, I looked up his birthday. Sis was born November 10th, 1981. And so, child, I'm really fed up. Here we are again, taking another hit. I'm sick of it. Two little measly days before my birthday. Immediately after her sentencing and they hauled that ass off to jail, she files an appeal. She feels like this is unfair for a couple of reasons. Now, for one, she said that the statements that she made during her interrogation should not have been admissible in court and presented to the jury because they were statements made under severe withdrawal. And so they shouldn't have been taken seriously. In the appeal that her and her lawyer filed, they also argued that a life sentence for anybody under the age of 18 at the time of the crime bars it's unconstitutional girl what you did to those people is unconstitutional girl let's talk about that like the nerve now in some instances i would agree with that notion but not in this one and honey i guess they share the same sentiments because they have denied that appeal and every one that she has filed since then has been denied she remains locked up down in texas and so it's gonna be there until she turns 60. This is not the look I had in mind for today's video, but I like it. It turned out really cute. It was supposed to be similar to this, but just like straight mint. I don't know how we got to blue, honestly. For me, a blue eyeshadow is always gonna end with a nude lip. I feel like that's just such a cute combination. Put a little of that mint on the inner corner. Little bit of blue underneath here. And let me add just a little bit of dark blue to smoke out the bottom and I'm done. Cause I gotta go watch Snowfall. This is the thing. My family always gives Franklin Saint the hardest time. They just blame him for everything. And I'm always trying to defend him because I like him. I feel like he tries his best to make the decisions that he feels are the right decisions for his team, but stuff just don't be working now all the time. And honey, my family is so sick of me defending him. So now I am Franklin little girlfriend to them and it's hilarious but honestly he's been pissing me off a little bit lately because he is at fault for what happened to Fatback and I don't like that he didn't deserve that at all that's what made me mad all right I'm done now for real I love it not as much as I love the last one though that one was cute this is close though I really like it honestly I might go somewhere today show it to somebody that's pretty much it for this video i appreciate you so much for spending time with me as always girl don't forget to like my video before you leave i be saying you leave sometimes without liking and i know sometimes you forget my girl i know but you can take this time right now to go ahead and give your good sis a like i know y'all gonna go in and let christine have it rightfully so though because this was just horrible like why why would you do something like this all these girls did was help you and look what you turn around and do. Y'all, let me know your thoughts. Enjoy the rest of your week, your weekend. Stay safe. And I will see you again on Tuesday. Peace. Why does the ear scratching feel so good? I feel like a fucking dog. I'm in a really, I'm in a minty mood today. I want to do a mint look. Hopefully it don't go left. Father. What was her daddy's name? Her look. Why was I going to say her little hair? That's not... That's probably not the best way to say it. Why am I getting, I'm getting this shit everywhere. Like really? Fuck it. It's gonna all be under makeup anyway. She does seek treatment. <laughs> Shout out to Lori and all the other mamas with a similar story. Girl, if I'm not a rapper by nature, the hell? Family to Clearwater, Clear Lake. Girl, where? Where is he? Clear water is a thing. I don't know where, but it ain't no thing in this story. I don't know if it's uneven or one of the pieces of tape is just longer than the other. And it's throwing me off. Oh, well. Christine is very, very happy with Christopher. I'm gonna call him Chris because it's a lot of Christine Christopher. It's a lot of Chris going on. Romance is abruptly, abru abruptly.
Jesus. He sought out to reunite, reunite, girl, where is it you? And he was a really, really geek. Yeah. And his cousin Alberta, uh, oh shit, wrong name. His cousin what name? No, damn Alberta. The foursome was, I shouldn't call them a foursome, that's weird. After the new, after, in the wooded area behind, yeah. One, she felt like the statements that she made. <laughs> Gloria also claimed in the, in the what, what was I about to say? Hey, Blue. Hey, Mr. Blue. Oh, look. Mommy got on blue eyeshadow, even though your name ain't spelled like the color, but whatever. You get it. I know y'all gonna go in and let Crystal have, who is Crystal? Girl, her name is not Crystal. Oh, let me get a thumbnail, girl. I hope my wig look alright, because I sure didn't glue her down. Girl, I forgot to put Mary Kay and Ashley back. All right, now I'm ready for my close-up, but not, but not too close, because I don't want them to see me that my wig ain't glued down, child, so not too close. 